the reactivity ethers is really dominated by the nucleophilic nature of the ether oxygen and it can donate one of its lone pairs to a variety of electrophiles. It's not the world's greatest nucleophile, of course, because oxygen is relatively electronegative. It's not as good as an amine, for example, but the lone pairs on oxygen are the most reactive electrons in ethers. So, for example, the ether oxygen can coordinate to a six-electron electrophile. An example of this might be something like BF3, boron trifluoride, six-electron building block. The ether oxygen has two lone pairs, and we can draw electron flow that amounts to an A sub N, or association of a nucleophile elementary step, in which a new OB bond is formed. What happens from here can vary, but quite often this is a prelude to cleavage of the carbon-oxygen bond towards oxygen and electrophilic reactivity of one of the R groups within the ether. Of course, quite analogously, protonation of the ether oxygen is also possible, and this can occur provided a strong acid is around. Really, there's not much of a difference in the basicity of ethers versus alcohols. Ethers tend to be a little bit more basic because carbon groups are linked to the oxygen rather than a hydrogen, but in any event, it's going to take a quite strong acid to protonate the ether oxygen. So something like H2SO4 or HCl is pretty much required here to get complete protonation of the ether oxygen. And analogous to the protonated alcohol intermediate, this intermediate as well has the potential to cleave such that the electrons in one of the carbon oxygen bonds heads to oxygen and we see electrophilic reactivity of the R group as R plus. Ether oxygens can also engage in beta elimination steps and one of the most important examples of this occurs in a carbohydrate context in which one of the alcohol groups in a carbohydrate is protonated creating a very strong nucleophuge next to an ether type oxygen. Strictly speaking this is part of a different functional group, which we'll see later in the course, but nonetheless if we just focus on this part of the molecule this looks like an ether oxygen, and that ether oxygen has a lone pair, and this is positioned adjacent to a good electrophilic carbon attached to a good nucleophuge, H2O+. We have the structural prerequisites of beta elimination then, and beta elimination in this case forms a new carbon oxygen pi bond and kicks off water as a leaving group or nucleophuge. The nice thing about the intermediate that results is that its resonance stabilized. The positive charge is delocalized over oxygen and carbon, and we can show that by pushing the electrons in this carbon-oxygen pi bond toward oxygen. In fact, we saw a similar type of reactivity in an alcohol context as well. We mentioned before that protonated ethers, which have a general structure involving a positively charged oxygen at the center flanked by two carbon groups and a hydrogen, are excellent electrophiles at the linked carbons. And so they can participate in elementary steps as electrophiles in a number of different contexts. For example, if we have a nucleophile around, and this can be a weak neutral nucleophile, such as an alcohol, the protonated ether can participate in an SN2 elementary step as the electrophile. If we examine just the right half of this molecule, the thing to notice is that this whole chunk has the potential to act as a leaving group. And so if a nucleophile comes along and the R group is, is suitably substituted, right, is primary, that's important, then we can get an SN2 elementary step in which the pair of electrons from the nucleophile forms a new bond to R and an alcohol actually departs as a leaving group or nucleophuge. In protonated ether type substrates, we can also observe this beta elimination, which is highly analogous to the beta elimination that we saw on the last slide, imagine we had a protonated ether that looked like this, whose carbon group, one of the carbon groups, is connected to a heteroatom, and here I'm just keeping it general and denoting it as X. This might be oxygen or nitrogen, for example. So we've got, again, nucleophilic lone pair adjacent to an electrophilic carbon that's linked to a good leaving group, and now water is not the leaving group, but the protonated ether itself, really the alcohol embedded within the protonated ether, can serve as a good leaving. And through N to sigma star electron flow that forges a new carbon X pi bond, we kick off the alcohol as a good leaving group. And you can see that's a theme that's appearing within this kind of reactivity. If a carbocation or other stabilized species with positive charge can form, 
just by dissociation of one of the CO bonds in the protonated ether, then it may just occur on its own in a D sub N or dissociation of a nucleophuse step. And here, there's no nucleophile involved. The HOR group, pretty good nucleophuge, just falls off in its own right. And in this example, the tert butyl cation would be generated as well. So really, in all three of these examples, we see the carbon group linked to the protonated ether acting as a good electrophile. And really, the protonation of that ether creates a situation where this carbon that I'm highlighting in green wants to accept electrons.